Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the first video of section 3 which is on optimization for training deep models. So this video is basically an introduction to what we will be doing in this section and uh, we will also start with, uh, with a distinction from, uh, uh, from pure optimization. We would make a distinction from what we are doing here, uh, optimization for training uh, uh, machine learning models how is it different from classical optimization problems, right? And uh, the reason is that there is a vast literature on how to do optimize, on how to optimize functions and how to find the optimal solutions and the characteristics of different functions and especially convex functions or convex optimization. So when you are doing the uh, the classical optimization problem. Uh, it's typically the case that there are uh, difficulties with things like local minima, right? So if I have a, a function uh, that, that looks like this, right, then I can get stuck in a minima like this, which is far from the optimum, right? And, um, and, and, th and that's, so even, even if that local optima is very close to the global, as in here, for example, that's still a problem in classical optimization problems, right? But in machine learning, it really is not that much of a problem if that local optima is close to the global optima. And the reason is that the cost function in optimization problems, that's the end goal, right? So the end goal is really to find the optimal solution. But in machine learning, the cost function is a proxy, right? So it's not the end goal. Because what I really care about is the performance, the test performance on data that I've never seen before during training, right? So the whole training process is a surrogate or a proxy for the real-time performance or the performance on data unseen during training, right? So in, if it were, if, if the ultimate goal was optimizing the training error, then yes, but it's not. Right, and the reason is that in learning, all I have about all the information we have about the true data generating distribution is basically through the training data. Right, so I have empirical data or realizations drawn from some distribution, and moreover, these realizations can be noisy. Right, and that's why we discussed. Uh, like uh, th that, that, that's the reason behind some of the regularization techniques that we discussed in section two, right? So all we have is the training data and we also need a mechanism to, uh, to learn from these empirical data. And that's why we have the cost function, which is a, a, a proxy, right? From a, a proxy or a surrogate. To the, to the loss over the test data, which we cannot measure during training. Not only that, but because I need to optimize that, uh, that cost function over the empirical data, so we need a mechanism for optimization and the mechanism that's used in deep learning is gradient-based learning, right? So as we discussed in section one, not all uh, cost functions are suitable or have good behavior uh, which is like when we discussed the desired behavior of gradient based, the gradient based learning imposes on the cost function. So we had, for example, that the, the gradient should be consistent, meaning the direction of the gradient should be consistent and the magnitude of the gradient should neither explode nor vanish, right? So these are restrictions that I have on the cost function, right? In an optimization problem, I am given the cost. I don't choose it. But in machine learning, we choose the cost function, right? And in many cases, this cost function is actually is a way to reach the, the, um, the ideal loss function, which would be zero one loss, right? If you don't, if your model is matching the training labels, then it's the cost is zero. If it doesn't match it, then the cost is one, for example, for the case of classification. But we don't do that. Even for classification, we usually choose uh, a, 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 a negative log likelihood or a continuous or a differentiable cost function that's easy to use with gradient based learning, right? So not only that the cost function during training is a proxy to the test cost, 
No, but even the training cost itself, I'm using a surrogate for it because I am restricted by the choice of the way I do optimization, which is the gradient-based learning mechanism. It, it, it imposes a restriction on the types of cost functions that I use, right? So to recap, the main the main difference is that in an optimization problem i am given the cost and the end goal is to optimize that cost in machine learning i choose the cost right and the end goal is to find is to optimize whatever that cost stands for right so i know that this cost is not my end goal and hence, I actually know that a good enough solution is what I'm looking for, not necessarily the global optimum, right? And in many cases, like when we do regularization, I actually intentionally, when we do machine learning optimization, we stay away from the global optimal of the training cost function because we call that generalization, right? Because if we custom tailor the solution exactly to the training data, then it will not generalize well, or at least that's the assumption, to test data that are never seen uh, during training. So th that's, that's, these are the major differences uh, from a pure optimization problem. Thank you.